Hello and welcome to another Notch tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at the Bake Lighting to Object node. This node has been around for a while. and I'm just going to go over it again because there's been a few updates with it. So I'm going to get the Bake Lighting to Object node. I'm going to bring it into my node graph and I'm going to connect it up to the mesh that I want to bake. The only setup you have to do on your mesh is you have to create a unique UV set for your light map to work. I tend to set this to a, a second channel and name it a UV channel two or something. And this will be set on the diffuse texture UV set. So your UV one set is for your, for any tiling textures, for any textures covering the geometry. And then you make a second UV set that has unique UVs to use for your light map. You can't have any overlapping UVs on this light map. Connect the bake lighting up and you can see you've got some options. You've got the bake now options, which will bring up the bake dialog. I'll go over that in a minute. You've got the file append. So if you want to add um, an underscore suffix to your name, you can add it here. So you can call it O2 or whatever you want to do. I'm not going to use it now. Uh, you've got the number of fine iterations. The number of refine iterations will determine how refined your light map images are. The less refine iterations, the more noisy it will be, the more, the less noisy. When you render your light map, you're able to look at it here. And I'll show you that once you've rendered it. Here are the widths and the heights of the light map. So they're set to 1K as default. On some smaller objects, things like the chairs in the background, you probably want to put a 512 light map on there. There's no point in wasting all the overhead of that extra memory. It will also make your file sizes bigger on your DFX. The larger your light maps are, the bigger the file size will be. Bit depth is set to 16. This means you'll pick up the high dynamic range of the lights in the scene. Um, it's probably best to leave that on 16 bits. You'll get a far better light map result. You've got post filter light map. When you check that box, what it does at the end of rendering the light map is it'll give it a slight blur. And that blur will get rid of any additional noise. So that means you can keep the number of refines limited or you can have a slightly smaller texture map if you want. The disable baking pass through or the disable baking will basically disable the light map baking on this light map node. So if I check that and say I bake a group of light maps, it wouldn't bake the lighting on this light map. You have the UV channel. This is defaulted to diffuse light map. And that means that will default to your second channel on your UVs. The color channel, you can use that as well if you've got unique UVs on your color channel. And then you've got your bake light map and in here you'll get a name of what your light map is and a link to it once it's baked. So now I'll go over all the different baking techniques to show you how it looks with each different baking technique. So let's find a nice area with some decent lighting in it. And then we can look at how to set up all the different types of baking. Select the object by pressing P and then press A to find it within the node graph. So this object's already got a light map on it and I'm going to remove it so that we can see what it's like without the light map on it. So all the lights are enabled. I'm going to turn the ray tracing on and I'm going to use the path tracer to create all the shadows and reflections and stuff in the scene. I always use path tracer lighting for my scenes because it gives the best and most realistic results. I'm going to select the bake lighting to object node. I'm going to set it up to 50 light map iterations. Actually, I'll bring in a brand new bake lighting to object node and set it up from scratch so we can see the whole process. So I'm going to connect it up with all the default settings and I'm just going to bake it, to test it, see what it looks like. So it's now been baked with 50 refinement passes and nothing else enabled, just with a 1K texture. So turn off the ray trace lighting and you can see what the light map looks like. So if I zoom into this area here, you can see that the light map is quite noisy still. You've got all the nice bounce lighting from the path tracer, but the lighting is still very noisy. There's several reasons why this could be noisy. One, the light map might need to be bigger. Two, we definitely need more refinement passes to get rid of the noise and let the uh, lighting refine more. Basically, the lighting, when it refines, it just bounces around more and more until the lighting generates a nice, clean light map. And we've also got the post filter light map. What I'll do now is I'll put this up to 200 refine iterations and we'll have a look at what it bakes again. Right, I'll turn off ray trace lighting. As you can see, it's still a bit noisy. It's better than it was. 
but it's still quite noisy. So I think we need a slightly bigger light map. So I'm going to put the light map size up to 2K. You don't have to use 2048 1024. The only reason I use that is because I'm a bit old school. You can just put 2000 for the width in and the height. You don't have to use power of two measurements. So I'm going to bake this again at 200. It's going to take a little bit longer. That light map took a little bit longer to render because it's bigger than the last one. As you can see from it, there's still a bit of noise on the light map. So I think we now have to look at adding the post filter on the light map. What the post filter light map has done is just added a little bit of blur to the noise on the light map as it baked right at the end. When you render your light maps, if you can just get away with the noise, so you zoom in as close as you can, and if you just about can't see the noise, then that'll be about right. You don't have to go too detailed with your light maps. A lot of this is hidden when you add the diffuse texture. You can render it bigger if you want to, but your DFX file sizes are just going to get enormous if you do that. So by just eyeballing it, either in this view, or you can actually put the diffuse illumination map on, you'll be able to have a look at what your light maps look like in detail. So the most recent updates to the light baking is we have a few other light baking options. These light baking options are absolutely fantastic. The first option is you can select a bunch of light maps together and you can right click. It brings up a bake lighting to object options. And you have two options here. You have bake all nodes, which is a fantastic bake all button. And then you have bake selected light map nodes, which is just as good because you can bake um, groups of light maps together in one go. I've currently selected all these pieces on the floor. So all these objects here, they have no light maps on them currently. I've stripped them all out. And what I want to do is put ray tracing on. I want to select all these light maps. Right click. I'm going to go to my bake lighting to object options and I'm going to select bake selected lighting nodes. Once I've kicked this off, I won't get any dialog box. It will just bake what's already set up on the bake lighting node. For this to work, you need your bake lighting nodes to be fully set up. You don't need them to have a bake light map in them, but you need them to be set up so the refinement iterations are the right amount, the size of the textures are set up to what you want them to be, whether you want post filter light map on or not. Once you kick that off, it will generate all the light maps. It will auto name them so they've all got unique light map names, but you do have to set it all up before you start. So I'm going to bake these now. And as it bakes, it will scroll through each light map as it renders it. And you'll see those come up on screen as it's baking them. Now that's finished, I'm going to turn off ray tracing. So as I showed you before, if you right click on the bake lighting to object node, you also get some options to bake all lighting nodes. So I'm not going to do that, but it works exactly the same as the bake selected node. It will bake all of the light maps throughout the scene. Um, all of these light maps have to be set up before this is done. So you have to make sure you've got your post filter light map if you want it on. You need to make sure your width and your heights are set to what you want and also your refined iterations. I'm not going to do it now because it takes a little while to bake the whole scene. You don't have to select them all, just select one of your nodes. You right click, you go to your options, bake all lighting nodes. And once you've set that off again, all your light maps will come up as the baking bakes them. Now, another node that the baked lighting works well with is a new node that we're going to cover in another video and that's the freeze geometry node. So if you select all these bake lighting nodes, we can delete those. And then we bring in our freeze geometry. We set the freeze geometry up by connecting it to the root node and attaching all the geometry that we want rendered. All this geometry is now rendered as one object. When it gets rendered as one object, I bring in a bake light map, bring that into the scene. I'll connect it up as I would any other geometry. This bake geometry will take the UV channel for all of these light maps and it will set it to the right UV channel. So that'll probably be UV channel two for these light maps. This is already set up for the bake lighting. We're set to the diffuse channel, which is UV two. Now I'm just going to quickly bake the lighting for these. As you can see, what it does when it bakes 
is it splits the light map into chunks. So every single one of these objects now has its own light map space on the bake lighting node. So there's nine objects and it's split it up into nine. So it's split it up perfectly. So each of these light maps gets a ninth of the 1K texture. If you want to make that bigger, you obviously just change it to 3000 by 3000, change the refine iterations as you would any other light map. This concludes the latest tutorial for the bake lighting. Thank you for listening to this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next Notch tutorial.